welcome to the Property Elite podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and co-founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. In this week's podcast, I take a look at the RICS review of real estate investment valuations. It's essential listening for all APC and SL RICS candidates with valuation as a technical competency. I also recommend reading the full review on our website blog, where you can find a link to the RICS website. This provides really helpful context and further detail into how the valuation industry is changing in 2022 and beyond. The RICS Standards and Regulation Board commissioned the review to future-proof the valuation of assets for investment purposes as a result of market changes, the impact of COVID-19 and structural shifts in occupier and investment demand. The review was led by Peter Pereira Gray, who is the Managing Partner and Chief Executive Officer of the Investment Division of the Wellcome Trust. He has over 35 years experience in the property investment sector. He was supported by an expert advisory group comprising experts from the valuation, real estate, regulation, financial services, investment analysis and academic sectors. The review focused on the valuation of property assets for investment purposes, particularly where these are relied on by third parties. These are typically high risk valuations where public confidence must be at its highest. These purposes specifically include financial reporting, inclusion in prospectuses, circulars, takeovers and mergers, collective investment schemes, unregulated property unit trusts and commercial investment property financing. The review made 13 core recommendations, three of which are considered to carry greatest weight. These are... One, the creation of a dedicated, independently-led valuation regulatory quality assurance panel under the jurisdiction of the RICS Standards and Regulation Board. (coughs) Two, the creation of a formal valuation compliance officer role within regulated valuation providers to ensure services are delivered appropriately, objectively, and to the standards observed across today's financial services industry. This role is envisioned to provide a robust foundation the full accountability and responsibility of valuation firms to their clients and to the Valuation Regulatory Quality Assurance Panel, particularly where multidisciplinary services are provided to clients. And three, the need for further specific RICS guidance to clarify RICS's expectations around the culture and behaviours expected of RICS professionals in the pursuance of valuation activities. In full, there were 13 recommendations, which I'll talk you through now. Recommendation one, commissioning and receiving valuation reports. RICS should work with appropriate stakeholders in standardising governance arrangements for commissioning and receiving valuation reports for high risk and regulated valuations. Two, valuation and advisory activities. Valuers with the support of RICS should ensure that the separation of valuation from advisory activities within firms is consistently applied in respect to the use of valuation data and instructions. Three, rotation. RICS should develop a time-specific mandatory procurement and rotation process for valuers. Four, compliance role. RICS should build on its existing RICS responsible principal obligation by developing a valuation compliance officer role to specifically cover valuation process and conduct. Five, raising concerns. RICS should ensure its clearly signposted processes for its regulated members and other stakeholders to raise concerns about ethical conduct and address, amongst other issues, improper pressure placed on valuers. 6. Quality Assurance Panel RICS should create a dedicated, independently-led valuation regulatory quality assurance panel under the jurisdiction of the RICS Standards and Regulation Board. 7. Valuation Audit Trail The Red Book should include further standards around the conduct and recording of valuation instructions and meetings between client and valuer. 8. Analytical Approaches 1 Discounted Cash Flow DCF. The valuation profession should incorporate the use of DCF as the principal model applied in preparing property investment valuations. 8. Analytical Approaches 2 Advanced Analytics. 
Our ICS should improve the knowledge and application of valuers in respect of advanced analytical techniques. Nine, global standards. Our ICS should maintain a record of valuation standards adoption and application in countries outside the UK, where significant numbers of its registered valuers operate in order to inform the extension of regulatory requirements and support to valuers. 10. Standardised property risk advice, with RICS developing a framework to standardise property risk advice. 11. Post-qualification requirements and revalidation. RICS should review its post-qualification requirements for valuers and consider introducing mechanisms for regular revalidation of valuers. 12. Diversity. RICS should continue to build upon its important work to ensure a diverse and inclusive valuation profession. And finally, 13, culture and behaviour. There's a need for further specific RICS guidance to clarify expectations around the culture and behaviours expected of RICS professionals in the pursuance of valuation activities. So the review promoted the adoption of the DCF methodology by valuers over the traditional investment method. For example, when you use a growth implicit yield to capitalise a rent into a capital value. For example, using a growth... The review promoted the adoption of the DCF methodology by valuers over the traditional investment method, where you would use a growth implicit yield to capitalise a rent into a capital value. This is because clients are increasingly requiring explicit valuation advice with specific or explicit inputs and assumptions adopted, rather than all being reflected in an all-risk yield, which is growth implicit. These inputs and assumptions include rental growth, risk premium, discount rate, timings, and exit point. So what happens next? The RICS issued a response to the review in January 2022. You can find a link to this from our website blog. They've confirmed that they will use the review to shape future RICS standards and regulatory strategy subject to appropriate stakeholder consultation. Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate, and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.